All right, color grading, and more specifically, um, in this video, I'm going to talk about color grading when we, we've just got um, you know a relatively flat line and color um, technique going on before. So um, you know the, the, there's there's a lot of sort of different color grading sort of techniques, and you can check out any of the tutorials that are part of this course. And they're all going to have a, a pretty big sort of um, color grading bit at the end where you can see, you know, again, how I do this when I'm actually sort of working with an image. Because, um, again, I'll, I'll always mix up those sort of uh, techniques. But, um, you know, in, in this one, uh, again, I'm just going to specifically talk about how we do it for flat color. And, again, the, the next videos after this will be about sort of different ways to add shadows or shading. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll obviously do a, a subsequent color grading video after that to look at sort of, you know, different ways we can, again, um, push the warm and cool contrast between light and shadow, etc., etc. When it's just flat, it's a bit different. Um, but I do want to play around with a few things and, again, show you some of the, the sort of non-linear um, nature of sort of what I'm doing. Um, just so you can again understand how it how it can be sort of useful again to keep things on layers um, you know for instance I, I I feel like maybe you know all of those sort of texture layers in the background are like a little bit strong right maybe we could kind of push them back a little bit um, sort of bring the character forward who knows right um, again we can just sort of tweak that reduce the opacity there and <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna think about um, you know adding some very very low opacity right sort of texture to sort of like fade out stuff over the lines right I feel like this is a really critical sort of element um, that's often sort of missed that we can do when we're working digitally right again I can kind of you know fade everything out right on top of those lines and this just again gives us a little bit of color variation to play with and again, it will sort of, right, it will sort of like push, push things down a little bit, make it feel a little bit sort of flatter, which again, you know, is obviously not always what you want. We don't always want sort of, you know, oh, it to be heaps flatter. But um, again, um, just adding a little bit, I think is good. I'm going to make another layer and we'll play around with, again, adding a few gradients here before we move forward. So again, I've just got a big sort of airbrush and we can kind of play around with, again, very low opacity maybe just again a bit of that kind of vignette idea right just pushing things up to the top right like thinking about again just trying to get people not to look at the side here quite as much I feel like often yeah zooming out is a really good way to kind of um, make some of these adjustments because you, you can kind of see the if, if we've sort of made some of those big um, yeah those big sort of uh, airbrush marks a little bit big um, a little bit too strong because um, uh, again if we you know if we kind of did right if we sort of did this right like you know I feel like often that's a little bit too strong right and a bit you know sometimes it, it's hard to sort of see when you're really sort of in it right and you're sort of zoomed up whereas when we sort of zoom out you can really kind of see it, it feels like that gradient is kind of overpowering everything right but again, this is where working in layers, I think, can be really useful. We can kind of dial that in, dial that out, play around with that. And then we can play around with the color grading process, right? So again, I feel like the gradients are there and I want to sort of introduce them because I do think that, um, again, they can be useful in the color grading process. But often, again, too many gradients just make stuff look a little bit flat, ironically. So here again... Um, what I'm going to try and do is employ uh, a couple of really simple color grading techniques. Um, if you, if it feels like your image kind of isn't, I'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can kind of see those things. If your image is sort of um, not homogenized enough, right, the colors aren't sort of, you know, um, they don't feel kind of of one, right, They're, there's a little bit too much sort of variety, right, I think just doing like very simple kind of you know, color grading where we kind of, you know, just move the colors around a bit can be sort of very useful, right? Um, you know, again, if I sort of make things a little bit sort of, you know, more green, something like that. Again, I, I always kind of like doing that. I'm going to make a new version of this and put it on, put it on the separate uh, monitor because um, I feel like when we're color grading, that can be really important because, uh, yeah, you get really fixated about a particular sort of look or something and then you kind of realize that uh, no one else can see that because that's only sort of 
a little fussy thing on, on a particular monitor. You look at it on another monitor and it looks completely different, right? But as an example, right, just doing a few little tweaks, right, just like just pushing things in a particular direction, I, I think can be sort of uh, very good for an image because it, it makes it, again, feel a little bit less like, oh, we just kind of dropped these, you know, day glow colors everywhere, um, you know, and so that can be good. Um, other kind of options that uh, you can sort of do as a simple color grade, right? Just stuff that will kind of often work again, like, uh, as I said, like just moving it all towards a particular area, just subtly um, can often be a really good thing. Um, another thing that we can do is just uh, play around with sort of, um, if you do have some good contrast there, right? We can maybe, you know, just increase the warm, cool contrast between the, um, um, you know, sort of lighter colors and the darker colors, right? So, you know, maybe we could make the lighter colors a bit sort of warmer, all right? So we've got those sort of neutrals and the whites, right? Like, let's make them a little bit, you know, a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter, um, and let's maybe make the blacks a little bit cooler, all right? Um, so again, I'm just sort of, I don't want it to be sort of blue like that. But again, I just want those um, those darks, the just darker color. And I'm bringing, I'm making the darks a little bit darker, right? Bringing some of that in, right? So again, that's like a again like a, a simple kind of color grade, um, where I'm just sort of modifying, I'm just sort of pushing the contrast a little bit, and then pushing some of the darker sort of tones towards the the cool, right? And some of the 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 mid tones and the bright colors towards the the kind of warmer color. And again, that'll give us a good contrast. Obviously, you need to pay attention to how your image is set up, right? Because, uh, you know, I kind of know that this background is a little bit darker. So, you know, if I kind of adjust those, right, those sort of blacks there, right, you know, that's kind of where that's going to be affecting, right? It's not going to affect, um, you know, um, other parts of the image. So, you know, again, like that can be a very, very simple sort of color grade, right? And it really, um, it really doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Um, just sort of tweaking again, mid tones versus shadows, and the way that the selective color tends to work, right? I'll just create a new layer again because a, a really good thing to do is create a bunch of different options, maybe save out a few different options, and come back and look at them the next day and feel like, and and, and see what you feel like works best. Um, but yeah, again, so I'm using the selective color adjustment layer, right? And I'm 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 when when it comes to what colors we're affecting, right? I'm affecting the neutrals, the blacks, and the whites primarily. Now, I can also affect these other things, right? If I sort of hit the yellows, right, there might be a bunch of yellow in that image. And you can see, again, I can kind of make that yellow sort of modified, right? So you are certainly free to play around with this uh, as much as you want. You know, I think some of these um, color adjustments can be really sort of interesting and, and, and useful. Um, but yeah, primarily I'm playing with those sort of neutrals. And the way this works is that, um, again, there's a lot of different color, you know, uh, modifying adjustment layers and methods in Photoshop. I just like selective color because it just kind of works how my brain works, right? It's like, oh, I want the greens to be different, or the blues, the magentas, right? Or I want the neutrals, the mid-tones to be different. Um, so you've got cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is weird because, again, we're sort of working in RGB, but this is sort of based off a printer sort of thing, right? Again, CMYK. It's pretty simple though. Cyan is the blue, right? And if I increase the percentage of blue, right? It just kind of is gonna put more blue in there, right? So it's like wherever there's kind of blue, right? We're just gonna increase that sort of blue. Um, so put that back to zero and um, you can sort of, right? You can either, this, this one will kind of undo all your settings, this little sort of backwards um, arrow. This one with the with the eye will basically preview what it looked like, right, without anything. And you can see it's basically just, you know, I did those few little uh, skin tone adjustments to the yellow. You can probably barely see that. Um, and uh, uh, again, you know, this, you can sort of trash it or whatever. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if I reduce the cyan, right, it's basically taking all the blue out of the image and that just makes everything kind of red. Same with magenta, right? If I put more magenta in, it's gonna make everything kind of that purple. If I take it out, it kind of makes it green, right? Because again, the lack of magenta in this system means green. So again, 
this takes a little bit to learn, but I kind of know like, um, you know, again, the same with the yellow, right? If we take the yellow out, it makes it blue. Um, if we put more yellow in, it makes it yellow, right? So again, cyan is basically um, sort of the blue bit. Magenta is kind of the, the red. Um, yellow is the yellow and black is sort of like, you know, how dark it is, right? So again, I can, I can take color out or put color into the midtones. Um, it's actually is a really good thing. I, I think you can often, if you if you get sort of too dark in your midtones, I think this can be a really, really good good way to kind of get get um, some sort of those neutral gray muddy colors out of there. Just like pull a black out of the midtones. Um, that's often a really, really good way to kind of, yeah, stop your image looking kind of stodgy and gray. Um, because again, often what we want is sort of contrast and it's very easy to get stuck in the midtones and, and not have an interesting contrast. This image is really designed around, again, primarily color. Again, I didn't put any um, like really sort of dark tones in the image at all, right? So really it's only that background that's starting to get a little bit dark. Anyway, so the basic idea here is, uh, again, I can sort of play around with this. Um, and again, sort of, you know, it's a combination of these things, right? If I sort of, uh, if I take a bit of the cyan blue out, right? And I, um, oh, when Photoshop gets a bit chuggy, it kind of doesn't commit to those sliders. Um, with the magenta, again, I can kind of, you know, make it a, a you know, a more purpley sort of color. And then I can kind of add, uh, you know, yellow to that. Again, it'll kind of change the, 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 the type of color, right? If I move it here, it's going to make it a greener kind of yellow. If I move it here, it's going to make it kind of a, a, a red or yellow. Again, if I sort of tweak that sort of red um, there, again, you know, I'm able to kind of move the, the color around. Now, depending on whether you pick absolute or relative will change the, the, the way that this kind of like uh, particular um, adjustment layer sort of works, right? They're, they're going to be different um, depending on sort of what you want. Again, I'm normally working with sort of relative there because um, that's not, not changing it quite as much, but it really depends what you want. Okay, so that's how you use selective color to grade things. Um, but uh, let's look at, uh, again, um, you can combine these, right? So you can have them sort of overlaying each other, which can be very interesting. But let's look at, again, my other sort of favorite color grading sort of trick, right? Is where maybe you do kind of really change the image quite a bit, right? You, you sort of say, you know, I, I want... Um, I want, you know, if it's not looking interesting enough, if you don't have enough contrast or color vibrancy, um, a really great trick I often like to use is to kind of think about, well, you know, something like uh, as an example of how you can use this. And again, you, there's, there's a million options, but a really good way is to say um, warm colors are going to sort of come forward, right, from a color theory perspective. Um, they're going to be kind of where our eye is directed. That's just kind of how the eye functions with um, wavelengths of light. And, um, you know, so often I kind of have like, a, you know, you, you might have in this instance, I've got a face, the face is kind of warm. And so what I want is I, I want to sort of play around with maybe just this um, color adjustment that I've sort of made. I want to make sure that this only happens sort of on the skin um, or, you know, around the face. And again, because we've got a pretty flat color that it's going to be very good at sort of making that happen everywhere. But all I do is I, I click on the, the mask and I go over to select and I actually click color range. And what this does is this allows me to um, do an interesting thing. And this is just a quirk of the way sort of um, Photoshop works. I've seen a few other people use this technique, but um, I think it's quite powerful again for moving um, color around on, on a, again with this style because it never really ruins it that much because it's so graphic to begin with. The basic idea here though is again, um, we, we start with a white one right and what it, this is going to do um, is basically select right it's going to select just that um, like a color that I've kind of clicked on right so it's you remember this has a very sort of uh, yellow sort of tone right so I've clicked on the face and what it's done is it's kind of said oh well we'll, uh, we'll create a mask and the mask is basically making whatever I click on white right and um, and that means that uh, you know um, whatever's white will sort of receive that um, color adjustment, right? So it's basically whatever I click on here is going to receive the color adjustment, all right? Um, now, again, there's localized color clusters um, that are sort of, that are important here. And so you can see that kind of, it, it is like a little bit sort of more, it is creating a mask that's more 
um, intense and white just sort of specifically where I click, right? So depending on where I click, right, it's a little bit sort of stronger. Um, and, the, and I can turn that off, right, by turning off localized color clusters. Again, it uses the same click thing, right? But it's basically like, yeah, it's like wherever that color is, we got you, right? We, we've got everything, right? So if I just want it to apply to this color, it's like, well, wherever that is in the image, we'll find it. If I turn on localized color clusters, right, it's gonna, it's gonna sort of get that, you know, um, in a particular area. And you can, um, again, hold down shift and basically add to it, right? So you can see sort of there, right? Um, you know, if I sort of wanna add, you know, over here, right? It's gonna sort of like start to add, add other bits to, to that sort of image, right? So again, you know, that can be an interesting effect because again, just clicking around, you know, I get some very sort of interesting, different sort of looks. Um, and yeah, you know, that, that can be, um, you know, that can be, that can be super valuable, right? So um, again, you know, e easy way to do it. Um, the fuzziness is the main sort of slider that I think is worthwhile sort of playing around with. And, and it's a fairly simple um, effect, right? Um, it just basically sort of says like, well, how how close to that original pixel um, are we gonna make that selection, right? And the more um, fuzzy it is, the more it says, well, all these things are kind of similar to what you clicked on, so we'll just sort of select them as well, right? If I make it sort of unfuzzy, it becomes, again, more graphic, right? To the point where, right, if we kind of pull that right down, it's really gonna sort of say, you know, like, no, no, only only what, only exactly what we you kind of like um, click on is gonna get, um, right, is gonna get, um, sort of treated similarly. Now you can see the interesting thing that's sort of happening here is because again, if I sort of do that, I, I'm actually going to increase the color variety here um, by sort of doing that um, because uh, again, I've got all this sort of texture here. So if I set it really low, I can actually sort of change different sort of uh, different textures and, and things there. Um, you know, um, be, because again, I've got this sort of modeled look. So it, it's, it's, Again, just sliding a few sliders and playing around with stuff, you, you can easily get some interesting sort of looks. I, I kind of like that sort of, uh, it's, again, I guess it's like sort of like almost like an ombre sort of hair color thing. It kind of like changes as it goes down here. I think that's kind of uh, sort of interesting. Again, you know, as a, as a color adjustment sort of thing, um, you know, and um, you can obviously, uh, once you've sort of done that, right, I can go in there and, you know, play with that or, um, you know, sort of basically adjust where that what's happening with that mask I can sort of paint some things out you you can you know have a have a hand in it as well right you know sort of modify it right what whatever you want um and the other thing is once you've sort of got that there like once we've sort of got the um once we've sort of got the the selection there I can go into that color adjustment layer and then I can sort of fuss around with it again right um so again I can sort of you know, we can sort of change it so that, uh, again, it's kind of, you know, it's sort of very extreme, right? We can make it like super sort of red. Oh, come on, Photoshop. Um, right, we can sort of, you know, change it to be like that. Um, and all that's happening there is that sort of we are, again, um, you know, if I sort of hide the mask, right, it's, it's actually got this really, really strong color adjustment now. And it's only masking in that sort of uh, little bit there. Right, so again, you can get some quite sort of interesting little effects um, in, in that way. And uh, again, create um, a bit of sort of color variation quite simply. Again, that's very subtle, but but that's often what we want, right? Uh, or, you know, that's often what, what I think is sort of interesting. Um, uh, again, you know, so, and you can sort of duplicate those and again, play around with them. So, you know, if we sort of, again, play around with the idea of, you know, making that quite, you know, a strong sort of red color, just getting Photoshop to, to play. Right, um, again, you know, you can sort of overlay that on top. Um, we can sort of, you know, reduce the opacity of it, right? So it's like a little bit sort of subtler. Um, again, like whatever you want. Um, the, the key there is to sort of understand um, how those things are, are sort of being affected and and the good thing is we can always sort of uncheck them and you know see what's more interesting um, and if we sort of check it versus the base one right you can see again it's sort of adding a, a lot of uh, sort of interest for, for not much sort of effort I guess 
So that was sort of the gradient sort of version. That's kind of the super flat version. That's kind of what we've got here. And um, yeah, you know, keep playing around, keep sort of grading, keep thinking about what sort of colors you want to use. And uh, again, you know, understand that, you know, you can um, separate the idea of kind of, you know, that initial color blocking that you put in can be a little bit more sort of literal. It's very easy then to sort of grade it down, get something more homogenized if you want, and then kind of adjust it, uh, work the warm, cool contrast, and again, play with some of those fundamental color um, sort of theory um, uh, ideas, right, and sort of see them, you know, happen right before your very eyes. Um, so yeah, again, the that sort of, uh, you know, what we'd sort of do is, you know, I'd sort of, um, you know, put, um, put that sort of uh, stuff there, um, the grade over the top, right, that sort of grain over the grade, and, and that kind of gives it extra, an extra sort of level of texture. And that really is kind of all I'm sort of doing when it comes to, you know, sort of like getting that sort of level of texture there that people are, people are wanting. Um, yeah, um, but that's basically it. So have fun grading. In the next video, what I want to talk about is I'll go in a little bit more depth about, again, adding a few more sort of textural things over the top because, again, that's pretty much it. And you can see that's sort of getting a lot of those effects that I normally get. But uh, I, I will go into kind of a few other things we can do to kind of, again, get a little bit more of a textural effect over the top if that's what you want. I'll see you in the next video. Happy grading.